There um, we go. Yeah, unintentionally awesome, says Killaby. I'm glad because uh, I don't know if I have the capability to really be intentionally awesome, but there you go. Okay, let's have a look. We see the expected trio of civilizations. Uh, it's kind of a power trio for 3v3 Arabia. Huns, Mines, and Mongols for both teams, so nothing's, no surprises there. Let's have a look at the civ positions and player positions. First and foremost, we've got LB10 towards the top of the map. He's playing the top flank for AOHD uh, as Mayans, so great position to have Mayans in. Um, in the pocket, we've got pocket Mongols for Slaktan in the Grapers A, and in playing the bottom flank for HD, we've got Toadie, Huns. On the opposite the side, side of the, the map, we have facing Toady in the bottom flank, we have Dr. Lecter as Blue, uh, Blue Mayans player. So pretty good to have Mayans flank again, unless, you know, like, I guess slinging from pocket could also be an option, but Mayans on flank if he's planning to actually participate in the game is pretty good. So, and then in the pocket position, we have Manigold, Huns pocket in purple colour, and in the top flank, we have Mongols flank played by Thor in the green colour. So, what do you think of the Civ positions, Doctor, first and um, foremost? If I recall correctly, the, the most ideal setup that most teams would prefer is having the Huns in the pocket. Now, Mongols, I guess, isn't too bad as well, if I recall correctly, but I feel like Onu is definitely going to be happy with their position here. Um, Hans is surely going to go into a somewhat fast castle and support his flanks with knights, and um, I definitely see them being happy with, with what they have here. So, yeah, and if you take a look at the maps of the flanks real quick, I mean, there's a very nice back gold for the Mongol player Thor as well, which he's certainly going to like. Backstone, so he can get his castles up if it goes to late game. will be able to get those. Uh, not so lucky on the side of Dr. Lecter. He does have the main gold forward and one of the stones forward. But still, one gold somewhat in the back-ish. It's a bit far from the TDC though. An Exodus Hill might be problematic. And wow, yeah, LB10 is also quite forward with the resources. Yes, that's nothing too bad for, for these players, but overall, I feel like in terms of positioning, uh, the advantage is slightly in Onu's favor, but it always is going to depend out on how they play. As you said, uh, there is certain different, certainly different ways to play this, like the main sling on pocket, but we don't see a main pocket here, and I don't feel like Mongols doesn't, doesn't usually sling, so we probably won't see that come into play. Really interesting, Toadie losing a villager to the ball there, but then he deleted the corpse of the palisade to avoid giving that intelligence to the enemy. Really neat little trick from him there. Um, yeah, I tend to agree with you on the civ positions with having the arms in the pocket, especially in 3v3 where normally a pocket does need to go uh, pretty heavy on the military to be a, try and support both flanks. Uh, Huns definitely ideal there. Mongols obviously in the pocket position will be a little bit more boom inclined potentially, so perhaps not as good at supporting the uh, supporting the flanks. Keeping my eye on LB's eagle because it did come forward very early. I wondered how much if he was going to try and steal any boars. It, um, it seems like both boars had been eaten for Thor at this point, but LB did at least uh, harass the villager that was building the mill a little bit. Um, didn't manage to pick up a kill despite the lack of loom, but uh, that could potentially have been dangerous for LB, for Thor, sorry. At this point all the players do have their boars in, so we're out of time for laming, or for boar laming at least, so I'm not going to go on in that regard. Not the good old Arabia with all the lames going on that we sometimes see. And most of these players are just trying to get the feudal age Taken some deer next to the berries as well for Thor as the Mongols. It's a nice little bonus. He's pushing the deer into the mill. It's helpful for him. Yeah. Not, nothing, not too much to say right now. We do have the barracks coming up for Dr. Lecter. I'm not too familiar with build orders, but could it be that we might see a rush from him? Also, the barracks up for Toadie. Not, I don't think we see any militia coming out from. Oh, actually, there is militia coming up from Toady. Yeah, I think there's going to be a drush war on the right-hand side, and on the left, probably scouts from um, the green player Thor, since he didn't do barracks at this point, and it's much more, you'd be much more inclined to go with the scout option as Mongols. Um, meanwhile, LB is indeed drushing, just creating his second militia at this point, uh, going to be heading forward soon. 
Toadu also doing a pretty sizable wall off across the front, but that is a nice wall. Does shield um, his main gold quite a bit. He can, if he can keep the wall up, certainly will be very useful to him. And as you said, we do have the militia coming out as well for Dr. Lecter, so we will be seeing a bit of a rush war here. Though this wall actually might be slightly in, not in favor of what Toadie has planned, because as you can see, his militia are now kind of stuck behind it. So he might have to open it quickly to let him through, or they will be delayed to get to his opponent. And obviously, you want to have those militia in on your opponent quite early. He's also going to wall off the other side. So Toady will be safe if he manages to keep these walls up. Though we see the villager being harassed by the eagle on the right side of his base. Trying to wall up, could actually go down, and it looks like it will. Toadie will lose another villager after that initial boar lure, where he did lose a villager as well. Two more villagers come in, though, so the wall will definitely go up. But still, it's a disadvantage. You can't underestimate being down two villagers. Yeah, being down two villagers as Huns against Mines is going to be really, really tough on the flank for Toadie um, in a kind of drush oriented play. And the militia are going to come through that gap as well. It's not going to get walled. That could be very problematic for him indeed, and he does not manage to wall that up indeed. Totally trying to just do some walling to help save those villages, and the one in the top left might do, but the one in the bottom right uh, is almost certainly dead at this point. He definitely has to retreat here, he will not get this wall up at all, even with some fantastic micro, I don't see it happening, and looks like he will probably keep both these villagers alive. Actually, he might actually be able to block the, the first, the second one of the eagle, and now taking some extra damage of the hill here could actually result in a loss, and it looks like it will. So three villagers lost for Toadie, which <laughs> still in Dark Age, it's going to be very unfortunate for him. I didn't see much happening with his rush. He is now at the base. He had has denied the wall a bit there, but uh, no significant damage done yet. Micro walls coming up for Dr. Lecter. And Toadie's going to be just too late with that wall on the gold as well. This drush is being absolutely devastating for Dr. Lecter, and I think there's possibly going to be another villager going down for Toadie here. Uh, yeah, that's now four villagers, five villagers for Toadie. Oh my god, Toadie dropping down to 25 villagers. Might be a sixth villager there as well. 32 of Mayans, the Mayans opponent that he faces. Toadie is going to be enormously behind now, um, and it's looking really, really promising for Dr. Lecter on that side now. Meanwhile, it's certainly worth a trade losing one one uh, scout and two militias for five villagers, even though one really wasn't uh, something that, that Dr. Lecter did. Very good trade for him. Stonewall's coming up now for Thor. He does have the scouts out, but he's not going very aggressive. Please yes. go ahead. He used the scouts to kill off the Drush of LB10, but slacked on single uh, starting scout uh, being put to good use, picking off a walling villager for Thor. So pretty good play by slacked on there. And the scouts for Thor will not be able to do a great deal at all since LB10 is fully walled. Um, if he wants to do anything with those, he'll have to go to the pocket who is slacked on, but slacked on has sealed in most of his resources. Um, so scouts for Thor probably not going to have much effect in this game beyond cleaning up the Drush of LB10. Which you see Tony now finally managing to wall it up as well. So after losing all his villagers, he at least will have these palisade walls that should give him some sort of protection. The repository as well. Yes, indeed. So on the north side, it feels like LB is probably going to be pretty far ahead of Thor uh, through into the mid game, considering he's aiming for more of a Drush FC style play with the Mayans. Whereas Thor did scouts, which aren't going to actually be put to much use, and did also lose at least one villager. Um, certainly, if you get those scouts out, then you do manage to do some early damage. Usually, not worth it, and as you said, fully walled. Definitely no way for these scouts to reasonably get anything done at this point, unless he maybe goes for Slag Tarn and manages to pick up a, a villager or two there. Yeah, the other thing is he Toadie is not walled at the back, and you can Toadie's going to be so delayed. I mean, he's he's only about forty percent of the way to the feudal age. Can you imagine if Thor's uh, scouts come in um, across the middle of the map and hit his goal or something like that? It's going to be absolute devastation. The back part of the space is going to be really hard to wall. It's very open. And he would have to use a lot of resources, even if it's just Palisade Wall to get those up. And I don't think Toadie can really afford to be delayed much more after losing five villagers in Dark Age. 
As we see Castlage halfway done for Slagtarn and Manigold is also on the way. He's a bit behind, but not too much. So we will see pocket players both in Castlage very soon. And it looks like we are gonna see knights from Slagtarn, unsurprisingly. It's usually pocket goes for. He does have one stable as far as I can see. But we do have two stables for Manigold, and uh, those Hans are just a bit better at getting the knights out. So might be a bit overwhelming. We will we'll see what happens. But two stables certainly gonna be a lot stronger at the start of this castle age. Yes. 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 I think we have another pause now. Actually, I... it's running for me at this. Yeah, it's just started up again for me. Game was getting a little bit bumpy as well because the the pause of, of in the game then desyncs the spectator server. Although things seem to have calmed down a little bit now, which is pretty good. Yeah, Slackton um, is a very boom oriented player when he plays Mongols. He loves to get uh, to try and just do some camels and not be like commit too heavily into military I'm not saying he'll just boom and let his flanks die but he, he'll he take what he can get away with basically and try and get to boomed up and into Mangi die as fast as he can so um, that's like his tendency so I'm not as surprised to see one stable from him in pocket mongols but he's really going to have to work hard to um, keep his allies on the flanks alive versus the two stable knights pouring out from these Hun stables over here Especially Tony might be in some trouble if those knights go to him. One villager going down for Slagtarn, those scouts actually put to use, they were going straight for Slagtarn afterwards. I think I just said the scouts from Slagtarn, no, it was the scouts from Thor. And they will pick off one villager, which at this point, you know, it's, a, it's something. Definitely can make use of that. And uh, we'll be heading on to Toady, as it would seem now, but they are being chased by some knights, so probably it's going to be the end of those scouts. Those, those scouts are actually hiding in the, in the ravine. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's pretty funny. It would be great if cliffs and stuff blocked line of sight, wouldn't it? Like if you were at yeah. the bottom of a cliff, you couldn't see what was on top of a cliff. <laughs> Someone should have wow, that feature. Just gonna <laughs> arrest this TC. Probably not gonna get anything yeah, done there, but definitely a fun move. I haven't seen that so far. Not, I mean, I've seen similar stuff, but not not something like this. It's a hilarious, hilarious move from Thor. Well played, and he is completely stonewalled as well. Actually. Manigold's knights actually went straight to the base of Lecter, um, so not really being put to use as well as they could be in the initial uh, moments of the Castle Age. And now Slakton has spotted those knights, immediately exiting them, and that gives Toji some advance warning to sort himself out and prepare for the, the onslaught from the two stables. Tony also manages to get up the castle age earlier than Dr. Lecter. He does have some army coming up already in his archery ranges. Let's take a quick look. It's probably going to be some archers, maybe some skirms for him. Yeah, he's making archers. He will be in castle age earlier, so they will probably be able to defend from these knights from uh, Manigold and maybe push back into the base of Lecter a bit. Yeah, it's pretty, rewalling now, though. pretty interesting that Lecter was uh, so delayed to Castle Asselage, really, considering he was so far ahead in terms of numbers of villages and being Mayans, etc. Um, seems he didn't really do much, so much of a Drush FC build. Um, instead, like he went to the Feudal Age and then added more than the standard two um, villages, but neither did he attack either. So probably slight, if he was aiming to do a standard Drush FC and just do two villages in the Feudal Age and go up, he probably got it slightly off in terms of his build order. Oh, this could be unfortunate for Tony. The knights are coming in as the crossbow upgrade is being researched. But maybe the knight will be able to get a few kind of easy picks on these on these Feudal Age archers. Yeah, like there we have the crossbows. Being caught slightly out of position. Toady Gonna try and retreat, but that means he's taking lots of free hits from the knights as well. Slackton coming in, and those camels are gonna start setting about the knights, and I think they're gonna end up cleaning it up pretty well, actually. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, if Toddy had waited just a little bit with sending his archers out, that could have turned out very, very differently. He did send them out before the crossbow upgrade was there, and these knights just managed to get those initial first hits in and close the distance very easily in the meantime. And that, I feel like he could have uh, quite a bit higher numbers up here of crossbows but still seven that's, that can do certainly some damage if he manages to micro well but the crossbows will also be banging at his door as you can see there is a tc going up for toady but a couple crossbows and skirmishers are gonna break through this palisade walls and i do believe the tc will go up especially with the crossbows coming to defend 
But yeah, he can't just quite go and go aggressive on Dr. Lecter at this point. Yeah, I think Toadie's probably going to be okay getting that TC up. But meanwhile, LP has been sneaking into the base of Thor, despite the massive stonewalling that Thor has oh. done. LP <laughs> has a bunch of crossbows in, and he's been harassing and I think getting at least one or two villager picks. I'd love to see where the actual hole is. I'm just going to drag the screen, the screen around briefly, which I know doesn't look great on Steam, but on screen, sorry. Um, but I can't see where this hole would have been. Same, I have no clue. But there is a hole. There's always a hole. It might have been. I see there's a rewall going in the back here. Maybe actually, it's maybe just the wall that he was finishing. Not sure. I just see one villager close to this house. Might have been there. But then again, I think it would be surprising if LB10 walked all the way around the base. But yeah, this is very annoying. He took him off the wood line here, killed the knight. And all the other wood lines are forward, not a huge deal at this point, as I don't see any aggression coming in towards Thor from that angle. But still a bit of idle time, certainly going to be annoying for him. And now we have to take a look at Dr. Lecter, who is currently defending. I think he will be fine with a large number of crossbows and the knights from many gold as backup. But yeah, Tody and Sank, uh, like Slagtarn are on him at this point, though I don't think they will be able to do much. Yeah. The walls. I don't think the the game plan that you would have wanted from Onu um, after Lecter took such an enormous initial advantage is really uh, happening. Like the amount of crossbows that Lecter's made, he should be pushing against Tody now because Slagtarn was sitting on one stable for so long. Um, his pocket went two stables, and yet. They haven't really done much with that besides killing off a few archers of Tony before they went um, turned into crossbows. Like they've got so much military and they went with such an aggressive play. Like Mayan's making tons of crossbows, Hans Pocket making double stable, and they're not attacking much or anywhere. And meanwhile, LB and Thor are just having their own one v one at the top, which um, LB is winning quite uh, handily at the moment, or certainly he's ahead, I would say at this point. And well, he's in the aggressive position. That's always going to be a bonus for him. Yeah, and meanwhile, like Slaktarn did the one stable, went for the more macro-oriented approach straight away, and now he's booming up pretty handily, uh, 10 villagers ahead of his opposing pocket, and he's just got a bunch of upgrades for his knights. I saw him getting, like, uh, barding armor and bloodlines and stuff like that, so he's going to be, he's, like, mini-boomed and now he's able to switch into more of a military approach, having gotten ahead in eco terms. Um, he's got plus two and bloodlines on these knights couple candles as well which might help him out against any potential knights coming up against and he can certainly do some damage but only one stable won't be enough I'm afraid he will okay he built a second one but maybe even a third one at this point if the strong eco depends on how aggressive he wants to go crossbows now going towards many gold the crossbows of LB10 that is and uh, he might get cleaned up by the knights here if many gold sends a couple more though and Lecter has pushed out with the knights from Manigold. This is actually a bit scary for Toady because whilst they do have some defense forces, that's a lot of crossbows on the hill. It could be problematic for them, but I think they should be fine to hold at this point. And Toady actually just uses the opportunity to go to the unprotected base of Manigold since his army is forward trying to put some pressure on Toady himself. So I guess he's going to rely on Slagtarn to defend him here. But they're yeah. going straight for Slagtarn, look at that. And that could be a big worry. If for AOHD, if like all of those crossbows and or the knights from Manigold all visit Slackton's base, um, but I really would, from Onu's perspective, like to see this army of crossbows from Lecter being put to use. And uh, look at this, we have two siege workshops coming up on Thor, so a bit of actually was a siege workshop and a castle that's definitely going to put on some pressure on, on Thor, and I feel like this wall is going to go down very shortly, which will take him off this stone. And the, the other stone for the Mongols is also very easily, easily, easily raidable. If you look in the back, and definitely put some crossbows there, and it'll be very hard for Thor to get into Mangu dies. If this game drags into the late game, could be very problematic for him, unless he manages to reward now, which he might be going for. LB getting crossbows. great use out of those last few crossbows he's had to hide in the forest just outside Manigold's base, taking down a decent ratio of knights there for those few crossbows that he had caught out. Um, oh, wow. So on both flanks really what we have is the Mayans player pushing and do it, well actually no, um, sorry Thor is Mongols isn't he, but we've got, uh, but the Mayans player being much further ahead of the flank on both sides, but remarkably despite the fact that Toadie lost five villagers in Dark Age, he's actually um, quite far ahead of the opposing flank. 
in thought, which really is testament to how much damage LB did to him with those that crossbow raiding in different places at the start of Castle Age where he managed to sneak through the walls because he managed to end up doing much more damage than even losing five villagers in the Dark Age did to Toady. Speaking of losing villagers, there's definitely going to be some going down for Toady here. Actually, just one. Okay, good. Good uh, reaction. Immediately puts him in a TC. These crossbows of Dr. Le Lecter, though, they've been going around all these bases. They went to Slag Tarn, now they're at Toady, but I feel like considering the investment of this huge number of crossbows they haven't done much so far they've killed one or two villagers at this point at least that's what i saw and other than that have been mainly walking around and you don't want to have your military just walking around especially with such great numbers he could have definitely been doing more he's gonna take toady off this wood and toady won't really have an answer to this he's Cavalry archers will not be able to stand up to these crossbows on the hill one more villager going down but still i feel like it's a bit Questionable if these crossbows have been able to do enough. Oh, and LB10 is in as well. But I guess it's a pause for you too, yes. right? Yeah, you're right. And only now, really, considering all how much army uh, only made at the start of Castle Age and um, Lecter continued to make, only now are they really applying a ton of pressure to Toady. Um, which means that Slaktan is just racing ahead. His villager numbers now is a hun uh, has reached 108. He's about to hit Imperial Age. Meanwhile, LB is uh, just racing away from Thor as well on the northern flank. He's about to hit Imperial Age as Mayans uh, with 75 villages, which is perfectly decent to just do a push from with one castle or two castles and some plumes and trebs versus a mongol opponent who's stuck in the castle age with only 50 villagers and, and uh, yeah also as i said could easily be taken off the stone which is very useful for the mongols to have the stone as one aggressive castle is going to be dropped right onto thor's face yeah. thor's crossbows now trying to do something at slack times they could be nailing all these villages on the wood line but instead they're just hitting a house so i feel like all this army that only had in Tony's base and really needed to be dealing a knockout blow and they're just not doing that at this point um and that's just going to leave Slackton and LB in such great positions to compensate for the fact that Toadie was falling behind. As you can see, Thor is kind of on his own, but on the other side, Slackton immediately sending a lot of candles and knights to help out his teammate Tony. And that is just going to make it a lot harder for these crossbows to get anything done. And LB10 is just having it his way here. There's not much Thor can do, and Manigold is not really helping yes. out his teammate. There's a lot of knights now going towards Toadie, I would assume. Oh, and they're actually in Toadie's space, if you see there on the west side, I believe it is. Yep. Quite a bit of crossbows and knights, but with all the cavalry archers and the camels that are here, uh, you can just... Oh, look at that Magnal shot. Oh my god. The knights, the, the, the knights, the crossbows from Dr. Lecter, they did get the Magnal, but that's about maybe 9, 10 down. Huge, huge shot, and that'll definitely clean up the army in the back here, and then they can deal with what's aggressing in the front. But that's a respectable amount of knights. Definitely... Not quite over at this point. This is still. Oh, look at this. They're just going to take out the TC. Yeah, unfortunately, I missed the Magnum L shot because I was looking at the knights pouring in through the west wall. <laughs> With all the engagements going on in the different places, it's hard to focus on them all. But uh, I think I chose the wrong one in that case. Um, we've got two players on the way to the Imperial Age, those being blue and purple for Onu now, but um, the kind of. Mirror players for HD have been in the Imperial Age and benefiting from those upgrades much longer. Did go down there. Uh, but in the meantime, TC also did go down for Thor. Uh, LB10 has a lot of plumes. He is just using these traps to take out the buildings. Uh, Rewall coming up from Thor, but. I feel like it's not going to be able to delay the, the Imperial mains for very long, having a couple of stone walls here, taking off some of the resources, losing one TC, certainly not a great position for him to be in right now, and uh, LB10 has spotted the stone in the back, and he will probably try to harass it to make sure that Thor does not manage to get a castle on. The defensive castle will delay him a bit, but currently Thor only sitting on about 100 stone, which is certainly not enough, and probably won't be enough considering the fact that LB10 will definitely use this opportunity to harass the stone even more. And also taking the stone of Thor whilst he's at it, so very great play by LB10, he's putting on a lot of pressure, very well played by him. Yeah, and yes. for HD now they have a fully imped Mongol player about to be applying a lot of pressure in Slakton. Um, so. 
Whereas the Mongol player, who is going to be the, the powerhouse that really carries in the Imperial Age uh, with this trio of civilizations, is the one in the worst position for Onu. So um, as we shift into the Imperial Age, the Civ advantage is falling to HD in terms of which player is kind of half dead for them versus which player is half dead for Onu. The lead Manguda is already there. We are seeing partly tactics as well, iron casting. Might be going into some Hussar to add onto that army then. Husbandry, chemistry, these Mangudai, very good upgrades on them already. They're definitely going to prove a great challenge for Onu to overcome. And still, you have to consider there's a lot of knights on the field for many gold, and he is getting Cavalier. Can't underestimate that though. Uh, we'll see what happens. But certainly I would say the position is strongly in favor of HD. Yeah, it's about to kick in, but the fact that heavy camels are engaging those knights and the knights yeah. uh, took, you know, they were always going to comfortably win that fight because of the sheer yeah. numbers. It was an absolutely crazy number of knights there, but they took a lot of casualties there versus just some leftover camels that Slacton had from the castle age but had upgraded to heavy camel. Um, That's been a favorable engagement for him. Yeah, Mangu the Mangudai numbers are rising and it looks like he is going to move out now to try and bend from these Cavaliers, I guess, first, but once he's been able to do that... Oh, actually, we see the Eagles! We kind of missed that at this point, but it looks like some... E actually, it was just some Eagles, apparently. There's like three Eagles in the eco of Slagtarn, but no more coming up. I was kind of looking for Elite Eagle Warriors. There is Eldorado research, but I feel like Dr. Lecter does not have to... He should not take his time here, he needs these barracks to be pumping eagles right now. Try to get into the economy to try and salvage this game for, for his team. But three three eagles on the base of Slagtarn are certainly not going to be the trick that wins in this game or that puts he them back in it. He doesn't have the economy at this point because if you look, he's uh, basically yeah. out of gold when he's trying to go eagles. and he ha They aren't even fully up to oh, eagles yeah, yet, true. which is going to be... Uh, <laughs> Difficult to impossible for him. Meanwhile, Slacton also helping to apply some pressure to Thor on the left-hand side. They've discovered the uh, new base that Thor had made on the left-hand side of the Eid corner, which <laughs> wow. is going to be devastating because once uh, anyone devotes any kind of siege to going over there, they'll be able to clean all of that up very, very easily. And LB has basically push all the way through the starting base of Thor at this point. Uh, Thor is desperately trying to wall himself into the left corner, but Slacton already knows about it and already has Mangadai uh, harassing it, which will now at least be chased away. And HD team has not taken any risks here. They are setting up a trade already just in case they aren't managed to close out this game anytime soon. And I don't see the same happening for the other team. So. Certainly such a huge, huge advantage in every way. Thor is currently on 40 villagers only, 43, and Todi has, has the least number of villagers on the other team, and he's sitting at 80, certainly a much better position. Building a new TC there, walling up. I, is he gonna sling or something? It would be weird to see the Han sling, but it doesn't look like he's making any more army. And again, the Mongol player will just clean up everything, so... And Meanwhile, blue player Dr. Lecter is just streaming like one or two eagles at a time across the map, trying to get into the ecos of the HD players. But that's going to be little more than an annoyance, really. He's not going to turn the face of this game with just some raiding here and there with eagles. Um, Slacktar, meanwhile, is just with the Mangadai that he's kind of peeling away, away for and like raiding and then peeling away. He's been occupying the Cavaliers of Manigold for so long, which leaves LB like with a free hand to just push three four. But right now, uh, LB has just got really caught out. Um, just there's a hole <laughs> for LB ten. There's some eagles coming into his base. If you look, he's completely walled, but there's one hole where the eagles are now trying to yeah, raid. Yeah, there's, like a, there's not many of them though. But yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, well, uh, his Cavaliers in the south, so LB getting caught out in two players actually. His uh, plumed archers had run into a whole bunch of Cavaliers now, Paladin. Fortunately, there's some nice geography there that they can use to, to hide out and not get too surrounded. But as that is happening, his eco is starting to suffer a bit now. LB does have a lot of military though. He's currently sitting on na nearly 80, most of which are going to be plumed archers. A yeah. choke point like that, that's going to be problematic. But yeah, his eagle is getting harassed. And these eagle, ni eagle warriors are just... They didn't really care too much about the town center fire, so that's definitely going to be uh, an annoyance for him, to say the least. But yeah, yeah. it doesn't even look like he's doing much against it. There's just villagers dying. 
Still on a hundred nearly, but yeah, Slack Tarn's gonna go and clean it up for him so he can focus on the push and the and the left hand side. I think that is the plan. Um, but LB with a hundred villagers as well, like he can lose decent like some villagers to that eagle raid, and he'll still be in a good good situation. But Slack Tarn will deal with it for him anyway. I also like didn't like how Lecter was streaming a few eagles to Slack Tarn's base as well because the Mongols are obviously gonna have a base full of castles at this point, so. That was always going to be, you know, not a great payoff with the eagle raiding that he was sending there. Continuing, considering that he didn't have a great amount of gold at that point either. But oh. LB pushing into the left-hand corner, which is going to deny trade for Onu. Um, if LB takes that corner, then Onu cannot trade, basically, or at least not any kind of favourable trade line. Whilst HD continue to have a full map trade at this point. Um, Lecter, the blue player, really needed to be killing somebody at this point, I think. Um, considering he was playing versus on Mayan's flank against uh, Hun flank and killed five villagers in the Dark Age, he needed to be racing ahead of his flank opponent and then pushing very, very early in Imperial Age and dealing considerable damage. And he hasn't done that now. And I think uh, his team are, are struggling as a result. Oh, and look at the amount of man good eye. Beat man good eye even of course for slag turn right now going through the middle uh, we can see the flares coming in from thor i think he wants them to wall up he probably knows what's coming <laughs> for them that's a very big number of man good eyes got 60 man good eye right now elite man good eye fully upgraded uh, i don't see how they're gonna be able to deal with this there's a combined 80 army uh, right now on the onu team and man good eye are just so strong with a bit of micro he can easily take out these eagles and Paladins are also not a huge threat, but he should definitely control his Mangudai as these Eagles are getting a lot of free hits on these Mangudai. Really but nice yeah. little house block on the left hand side by um, LB10 as well, like his plumes were going to get surrounded and charged at by the, the Paladins, but he put up one house and then one plume stood in the remaining one tile gap, completely stopped the Paladins from going in for ages. Um, those Mangudai are really well positioned now. Slack time. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say Slacton has his Mangudai in an absolute perfect position there, whilst the army of the purple player is running past him. And now the plumes are coming towards them as well, so he does. we do have two armies here, and that's a lot of paladins, but might not be enough. I mean, there's, there's just so many Mangudais and plumes. They can afford to lose some. If they take out all these paladins, there's barely any army left for the Onu team. Well, yeah, LB10 is sitting at nearly a hundred military, most of which I would assume is Loomed Archer. A couple of pikes are thrown in there, Halberdier upgrade is being researched. And even if they manage to take out these plumes here, the Halberdiers are definitely going to be... Yeah, there's the GG. They know that they probably can't take yeah. on this army, even if they manage to keep the plumes. With the helps coming in and the Mongol support, they will lose the Paladins and that would be the end of it as there's not much more going on. Uh, as we've seen, Thor didn't have any army, and yeah, the eco of Lecter, not too strong anymore, the, raid were, the raids weren't too successful, the rams were going to be denied if you look at Toadie's base, who has gotten into Cavalier, so yeah, comfortable 2-0 victory for the HD team. Very well played by them, I feel like they really played well together as a team. Yeah, it's what I was try trying to reference beforehand that they've, these guys have played together and they definitely, uh, when they come together in serious tournament play and play well, but I think they play above the kind of 1800 rating that they have um, and take on some very good teams. I'm not sure that Onu was fielding like their best, best team considering that they didn't have Stark as far as we could tell today. Um, we're not quite sure who some of these players are, but it certainly didn't like without willing to offend any of them it didn't seem like they had a say 2300 1v1 player um on their side today um would have been really nice to see how ht could have done um would have done if stark had been playing for onu well ht certainly will be facing some more difficult opponents in the future also in the rts league there's still some very strong teams up against them and uh, they might be put in some more trouble in the next matches we will see yeah it's but definitely well played by them you called it that they play well together as a team you were completely right great great play by them and uh, props to both teams for making it this far and for to hd especially for going even farther very good games indeed and we didn't see water maps i Never like to cast water maps, I'll have to say that. I mean, there's some water on, on, on Nomad, but overall, 
good games. Also, pleasure to watch, and not just the one unit war that we sometimes see on something like Islands. Yeah, I actually quite like um, casting Islands games, like especially Islands team games, but I may be alone in that. Um, I don't like to watch them endlessly, but certainly if there's one Islands in a game in a set of games, I actually quite enjoy that. Um, I don't mind the occasional water map, but if we, I think back in the day we sometimes had two out of three games being dominant, like predominantly water maps, and I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't consider it, it's not bad, it's still interesting games and all, but it's just not the same as some good old-fashioned Arabia or even Nomad. But yeah, definitely had some fun here, it was great to be back and to do some co-casting, so thanks for having me.